Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you could come today. Um, our very special guest today is Dr. Del Diamond. Dr. Diamond is the Tier 1 Research Chair Professor of Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. She's a member of the Royal Society of Canada as recently was recognized as one of the 15 most influential neuroscientists alive today. Dr. Darman was educated at Swarthmore, where she was Phi Beta Kappa, where she received her BA, her PhD from Harvard, and a postdoc from Yale Medical School. Dr. Darman's discoveries have improved the treatment for millions, millions of, of children, including uh, in the area of ADHD, and she's impacted education worldwide. Her many awards include an honorary doctorate from Ben Gurion University and the Bronfen Benner Award for Lifetime Contributions to Developmental Psychology in the Service of Science and Society. And very notably, she was named a Woman of Distinction by the YWCA and named one of the 2,000 outstanding women of the 20th century. Before I tell you about our guests for a moment, I want to say do any of you watch Saturday Night Live? So you know the whole thing about Pete Davidson and Ariad Grande, which goes, you know, uh, you know, this is Ariana Grande, the top pop star in the world, and I'm the guard Saturday Night Live. That's how I feel. Because when I tell you who I am, I take this off, and I feel like I'm the guy from Saturday Night Live. Okay. So let's, I just want you to know who our audience is today. Um, our guests are learning and health professionals from many fields. We're delighted you could come. There are learning specialists. Many belong to a learning specialist listserv. Neuropsychologists, psychologists, school deans, administrators, educational therapists, physical and occupational therapists, PhDs in various sciences. Have I left out any? Speech. Speech. <laughs> Thank you so much. You see, my diction is perfect. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, our only regret, and actually we filled up, was that we had limited space and a desire for um, some intimacy. This wasn't the circle we envisioned. But we plan to um, videotape this event. And, uh, and so that we can have a future event we've already been asked, and we'll use some video from this event and invite additional people, and maybe with luck, wherever Dr. Darman is traveling, we can get an answer to some questions live for all the people from the other learning specialist group that didn't get to come, and all the people that regrettably couldn't come today. So thank you for your participation. I also want to thank the, the, the members of the EFCNY leadership team who are here today, my partner, Dr. Matthew Kelly, partner, Inya Yang, Brian Kalimian, my oldest student of more than 10 years, who is now finishing college. Rick Royal, our head of uh, drumming, and Dr. Cynthia Parsons Puccio. We're thrilled you could be here. Tioma Malaratsky let you in the door if you were downstairs. He's kind of like Yul Brenner and very imposing. Um, thank you. The majority of you don't know me yet, certainly not personal. Personally, I am Dr. Stephen Rudin, and it is my privilege to be the principal mentor of Individual U. You may have known our other organization of, of EFCNY, um, Individual U and Peak U or other organizations, so most people know our other, our other organizations. It was Dr. Diamond's research and her passion for improving the lives of children everywhere that was my inspiration for founding Executive Function Center of New York and for helping to elicit support for the work that the Diamond Lab does. So we have some information about the Diamond Lab on the table when you go out if you want to read about it, about her research. And I spend part of my time talking with families of great wealth and affinity about how their rising generation should look to support research that will be helpful to them and to children everywhere. Let's begin. Um, Adele, you often say that executive functions, this is, I love this quote, as the plural implies, are not just one thing but a collection of abilities, all of which are important for mindful, attentional, goal-directed behavior. So before we get into your rather unique classification system for executive function, I'd like to ask you by beginning a three-part question so we can all kind of warm up our working memories. So exactly which part of the brain do executive functions depend on? How is that information determined? How do we know that it's that part of the brain? And anatomically and physiologically, do other parts of the brain send neurons or chemicals into that area that can impact executive function either on an ongoing basis or sporadically? So no area of the brain works in isolation, just like none of us works in isolation. Um, all the, all, everything that's done in the brain is done by circuits. It's done by multiple regions acting together. But the kingpin of the executive function network is prefrontal cortex. 
And we know that by multiple methods. So you're probably familiar with neuroimaging. There's uh, electrical recording, EEG, ERP, there's fMRI, there are all kinds of ways to look at activity in the brain. 